Hello, I'm Hank Green, and you are watching Faith Elements. A friend of mine who will remain nameless, but his name starts with R and rhymes with boss, recently told me that I'm just too easygoing and optimistic. He said that I don't vent enough, and he didn't even think I had the capability of venting in anger. Well, all right! I'm just going to come right out and vent over some stuff that's really been bugging me so I can just get it off my chest. I hate that I stood outside my house for months waiting for the Google Street View car to drive by and then they blurred my face in the picture. I hate that I only get one color choice when it comes to bananas. I hate that while at the dentist this morning, I'm pretty sure I blinked during my x-ray. I hate that pop culture and the music industry have completely ignored my recent works in hip-hop Gregorian fusion. <laughs> Now, I've been silent way too long on this last issue. This one is a global epidemic that goes completely ignored by every news agency and watchdog group out there. What is this pebble in my shoe, this burr under my saddle, this thorn in my side, this sand in my trunks, this splinter in my finger? I hate hidden I tracks! Hate hidden track. That's right, I said it. Now, for those of you who have no idea what a hidden track is, you might ask, Chris, what is a hidden track? What are you talking about? Well, I'll tell you about this worldwide epidemic. But first, it's Blue Banana time. Blue banana. Hmm. That's so much better. If you have a CD collection of any size, you have probably run across a hidden track. A hidden track, which is also referred to as a secret track or a ghost track or even a bonus track, is a song or additional piece of expression that isn't easily found by the average user. It can be as simple as an extra track that isn't listed on the cover information. The CD liner may only list 12 songs, but your player finds that bonus 13th track. That kind isn't so bad. The kind that really gets me riled up is the silence gap kind of hidden track. A silence gap hidden track is the kind of long gap of silence that is intentionally placed at the end of a song, then the hidden track appears after the long gap of silence. But it's all contained inside the same track. That's the kind that just burns me up. As a matter of fact, I'm a little too ticked off to keep shooting and I need a little break. Steve, fill in while I walk it off. Yeah, go relax and stuff. Welcome to the history of the Hidden Track 101. My name is Steve. Interestingly enough, the concept of a hidden track is not unique to CDs. There were many artists who have used the silence gap type on cassette tapes, and before that, there were examples found on vinyl LPs. One of the most interesting examples being Monty Python's three-sided LP, where one side of the record actually contained two separate side-by-side -side grooves on the LP. If the user of the record player did not intentionally place the needle on the second groove, they would never even know the third side existed. Some attempts were made at hiding secret messages to the most dedicated of fans by placing hidden tracks on LPs, tapes, and CDs. You can find examples of hidden tracks. All right, that's enough. Now back to why I hate hidden tracks. You know, they aren't so bad when you're listening to them on CDs. In fact, it's actually kind of fun when you actually discover one. You usually find them when you're working on something that has your attention, like painting a room or something, and you forget that you have the CD player going. And then BAM! Out of nowhere, here comes this mystery song you've never heard before. But now that I have all my music on my iPhone, I find the practice quite bothersome. No, not bothersome! I forgot I'm venting here, and it makes me all crazy, and I just can't keep it inside anymore. The problem is I now have memory on my device occupied with nothingness. What sense does that make? It doesn't make any sense at all. In fact, it's a matter of epidemic proportion. As an example, I found a song on my iTunes with four minutes of silence before the hidden track and after the actual listed track. I would tell you the name of the artist in the song, but that might be a copyright infringement. But I'll play the section of the track for you that drives me nuts right now. Or maybe I didn't play anything at all. You wouldn't know because it's nothing but silence. Ah! The entire song was 10 minutes, 10 seconds long, and 19.2 meg in size at a sampling rate of 256 kbps. After removing the 4 minutes of silence, the song was 11.7 meg at 256 kbps. At a sampling rate of 256 kilobits per second, 4 minutes of silence amounts to 7.5 meg of memory space. That's 7.5 meg of memory that was occupied by absolute silence. Nothingness! And that's just one song. There must be 10 or 15 songs on my iPhone with silent gap track kind of hidden track things. That's at least an additional 10 to 20 meg of absolute empty data taking up my precious memory space on my iPhone. And that's just my iPhone. Let's look at how this is a global epidemic. 
Between 2001, when the iPod was first released, through January of 2010, the late, great Steve Jobs announced that 250 million iPods had been sold worldwide. As of 2010, iPhone sales were in the neighborhood of 60 million, but that number is estimated currently in the neighborhood of 100 million. The current estimates put iPad sales in the 25 million mark. So being very conservative with my math, 250 million iPods plus, say, 75 million iPhones plus another 25 million iPads puts us somewhere in the neighborhood of 350 million iDevices around the world. Keep in mind, my numbers are rough, outdated, and very conservative. If every one of those devices had just four minutes of hidden track data at around six to eight megs, depending on the sampling rate, that equates to 2.8 times 10 to the 15th, or two comma eight and a lot of zero bits 2.8 petabits of wasted data on iOS devices around the world. That's not even counting the wasted data on all the computers of all those iOS users. At the end of 2010, the average cost of the purchase memory was around 8.21 cents per gig or 122 meg for a penny. If you apply those averages to the wasted space due to my conservative efforts on hidden tracks, we are wasting 22,988,000 in memory right now in the world. That's more than the gross domestic product estimates of the island nation of St. Helena, which is complete insanity, people! More chanting! <laughs>How much of our lives do we take up with nothingness? Do you ever think about the energy we put toward absolutely nothing at all? Do you ever find yourself at the end of a day and wonder what you actually did that was productive? Do you find yourself spending time on stuff that just doesn't matter or amount to much? I recently heard a time management guru say that you can't actually manage time. All you can do is manage what you do within a span of time. Time is a commodity that we all have. We attach the same verbs to it as we do money. We can spend it, use it, waste it, invest it, almost as if it were monetary in nature. If you have a job, you are really accepting payment in exchange for your time. That means time has a value. Ephesians 5 says we need to be very careful then how to live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most out of every opportunity. There is a story found in Matthew that speaks of doing nothing with what we've been given in life. There was a man who was going on a journey. Being that he was a man who believed not in putting all of his eggs in one basket, he called to his servants and entrusted the three of them with the entirety of his wealth. He gave the first more than the second, and he gave the second more than the third. Then he went on his journey. The first man and the second man invested the money given to them wisely, while the third buried the money in a hole in the ground. During the course of the rich man's long journey, the first man and the second man doubled the money given to them. Now, while the third man kept the money safe in the hole in the ground, he didn't do anything productive with what had been put in his care. He thought he was doing enough to keep the investment safe, but what he was really doing was wasting an opportunity by doing little to nothing with what he had been afforded. How many of us neglect to utilize our talents, gifts, and abilities to their fullest potential? How many of us exist in a constant state of underutilized time? We all do it and we all come up with great reasons to justify it. But how you spend, invest, or waste your time matters. Unlike the other monetary associations we tend to place on time, the one thing we can't do is save up or earn more of this most precious commodity. Something to pray about, don't you think? Thanks for joining me. I mean, just, just think about it. Blue and banana, they just, just, just go together. More chanting. <laughs>